Hello guys, I'm reading chapter 2 of Fantastic Mr. Fox. So let's begin. Chapter 2. Mr. Fox. On a hill above the valley, there was an, a wood. In the wood, there was a huge tree. Under the tree, there was a hole. In the hole lived Mr. Fox and Mrs. Fox and their four small foxes. Every evening, as soon as it got dark, Mr. Fox would say to Mrs. Fox, Where, my darling, what shall it be this time? A plum, a plum chicken from Bogus, a duck or goose from Buns, or a nice turkey from Bean. And when Miss Fox had told him what she wanted, Mr. Fox would creep down into the valley in the darkness of the night and help himself. Bogus and Bunsen Bean knew very well what was going on and it made them wild with rage. They were not men who liked to give anything away. Less Less still, they did like anything to be stolen from them. So every night, each of them would would take a, his shotgun and hide in the dark somewhere, dark place somewhere on his own farm, hoping to catch the robber. Mr. Fox was too clever for them. He was approached a farm when the wind wind blowing in his face and this meant that if any man were lurking in the shadows ahead the wind would carry the smell of that man to mr fox's nose from far away thus it, if mr bogus was hiding behind the chicken house number one mr fox would smell him out from 50 yards of and quickly changed direction, heading to chicken house number four at the other end of the farm. Dang and blast that blousy beast, cried Boris. I like I would like to rip his guts out, said Bunce. We must kill him, said Bean. But how, said Boris, how on earth can we catch the blighter? Bean picked his nose delightedly. With a long finger, I have a plan, he said. You will never had a decent plan yet, said Bunce. Shut up and listen, said Bunce. Tomorrow night, we'll, we'll all hide just outside the hole where the fox lives. We will wait there until he comes out and then bang, bang, bang. Pew, pew. Very clever, said Bunce. But first we shall have to find that hole. My dear Buns, I have already found it, said the crafty bean. It's up in the wood on in the hill. On, it's under a huge tree. And that's chapter three. I think let's read another chapter. Might get interesting. Chapter three, the shooting. Well, my darling, said Mr. Fox, what shall we tonight? I think we'll have... Duck tonight, said Miss Fox. Bring us two fat ducks, if you please. One for you and me, and one for the children. Duck shall be, said Mr. Fox. Bunts best. Now do be careful, said Miss Fox. My darling, said Mr. Fox. I can smell those goons a mile away. I can I can even smell one from the other. Bogus gives me a filthy stink of rotten chicken skins. Buns creaks of goose liver. And as for bean, the fumes of apple cider hang around like him like around him like poisonous gases. Yes, but just don't get careless, said Miss Fox. You know they will be waiting for you, all three of them. Don't you worry about me, said Mr. Fox. I will see you later. But Mr. Fox would not have been quite so cocky 
had he known exactly where the three farmers were waiting at that moment. They were just outside the entrance hole. Each one crouching behind a tree with his gun loaded. And what is more, they had chosen their position to be careful, making sure that the wind was not blowing. For them, towards the fox's hole, in fact, it was blowing in the opposite direction. There was no chance of them being smelled out. Mr. Fox crept up the dark tunnel to, to the mouth of his hole. He poked his long, handsome face out into the night air and sniffed once. <sniffs> he moved an inch or two forward and stopped. He sniffed again. He was always especially careful when coming out from his home. He inched in the forward a little more. The front half of his body was now in the open. His black nose twitched from side to side, sniffing and sniffing. For the scent of danger, he found none. And he was about to go trotting forward the wood when he heard of thought he heard a tiny noise, a soft rustling sound, as thought someone had moved a foot very so gently through a patch of dry leaves. Mr. Fox fattened his body against the ground and lay very still. His ears prickled. He waited a long time, but he heard nothing more. It must have been a field mouse, he told himself, or some kind of small animal. He crept a little further out of the hole, then further still. He was almost right in the open now. He he took a last a, a ca- took a last careful look around. The wood was murk murky. And very still. Somewhere in the sky, the moon was shining. Just then, the sharp night eyes caught a glint of something bright behind a tree not far away. It was a small silver peck of moonlight shining on the polished surface. Mr. Fox lay still, watching it. What on earth was it? Was it? Now it was moving. It was coming up and up. Great heavens! It was a barrel of gun! Quickly as a whip, Mr. Fox jumped back into his hole and, and at that same instant time, instant, the entire world seemed to explode around him. Bang, 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 bang! The smoke from the three guns floated upward in the air, night air. Bogus, Bunce and Bean came out from behind the trees and walked towards the hole. Did we catch him? said Bean. One of them shone a flashlight on the hole. And there on the ground, in the circle of a light, half in and half, out of the hole lay the poor, tattered, blood-stained remaining of a fox's tail. Bean picked it up. We got, we got the tail, but we missed the fox, he said, tossing the thing away. Dagbar, said Boris, we should too late. We should have let fly the moment he poked his head out. He won't be poking it out again in hurry, Bond said. Bean pulled a flack from his pocket and took a swing of cider. Then he said, it will take three days at least before it, he gets hungry enough to come out, out again. I'm not still around here waiting for that. Let's dig him out. Ah, said Bogus. Now you're talking sense. We can dig him out. Him... Out in a couple of hours, 
we know he's there. I reckon there's a whole family of them down the hole. But Mon said, then we'll, we will have the lot, said Bean. Get the shovels. Here's Bean drinking his cider and his dog is the fattest fat farmer of all. Not the cleverest. And there's Bunce, the pot belly dwarf. <laughs> and that's actually the end of the chapter three. I hope you um like chapter three and two. And I wish you had a nice day. Bye.